The Daegu subway fire, a scar etched into South Korean history, began on February 18, 2003. It wasn't just a fire, it was a confluence of tragic events, a horrifying cascade of errors leading to an unimaginable loss of life. The sheer scale of the disaster, the deadliest single criminal act in South Korean history, demands reflection. One wonders, could this tragedy have been averted? Could the staggering death toll of 192 souls have been lessened with better preparedness and swifter response? The rapid post-war expansion of Daegu, a city that saw its population explode tenfold between 1953 and the end of the century, placed enormous pressure on its infrastructure. The construction of the Daegu Metro, a vital undertaking meant to alleviate traffic congestion, was completed amidst this tumultuous growth. This, however, doesn't fully explain the scale of the devastation. It raises the chilling question, was the haste for modernization a factor that contributed to a flawed system ill-equipped to deal with catastrophe? The 1995 gas explosion during the metro's construction, claiming 101 lives, serves as a stark reminder of the inherent risks involved. Did this earlier tragedy adequately inform the safety protocols implemented thereafter? This is a crucial question that must be asked, and one that we'll examine in more detail. The event itself wasn't simply a consequence of poor infrastructure, the systemic failings of emergency response played a pivotal role. It was, ultimately, a story of preventable failures. The inferno began on board train 1079 at approximately 9.45 a.m., a time when the morning rush had subsided, but the train was still carrying a substantial number of passengers. Kim Dae-han, a taxi driver struggling with severe mental health issues stemming from a stroke and perceived mistreatment in a psychiatric hospital, was the arsonist. His act of desperation, fueled by gasoline-filled milk cartons, quickly spiraled out of control. The struggle to prevent him from igniting the gasoline resulted in a catastrophic spill, and the subsequent fire spread rapidly throughout the train's predominantly plastic interior. We can only imagine the terror of those passengers, the struggle for survival in the face of overwhelming heat and suffocating smoke. The quick spread of the fire is a chilling testament to the combustibility of the train's interior design. Why were such flammable materials used? What measures could have been put in place to mitigate the rapid spread of flames? What steps could have been taken to improve fire resistance? These were not mere points of contention, they were critical flaws that contributed to the scale of the disaster. This was more than an accident, it was a system failure. It was a disaster waiting to happen. The investigation following the Daegu subway fire was extensive, focusing on the actions of Kim Dae-han, the arsonist, as well as the responses of those tasked with averting a greater catastrophe. Kim Dae-han's arrest was swift, his guilt undeniable. His mental state, however, played a significant role in the legal proceedings, leaving the courts with a challenging dilemma. Were they dealing with a calculated criminal or a severely mentally ill individual driven to an act of despair? The sentencing, life imprisonment, although he died the following year, sparked debate. Was justice truly served? Beyond Kim Dae Han, the spotlight fell upon the train drivers and the control center's response. Driver Choi Sangyol of Train 1080, which entered the station after the initial fire broke out, faced significant criticism for his actions. His decision to initially keep passengers on board, despite visible smoke, and then to take the master key with him upon fleeing, leading to additional deaths, raised serious questions about training and protocol. 
Did the control center adequately assess the severity of the situation and provide timely, effective instructions? Were the available communication systems sufficient to manage such an emergency? The investigation wasn't merely about assigning blame, it was about uncovering systemic weaknesses that allowed such a preventable tragedy to unfold. The trial of Kim Dae-han, the arsonist, was a complex affair. While his guilt was clear, his mental health significantly shaped the proceedings. The fact that he received a life sentence instead of the death penalty, though ultimately moot due to his death the following year, highlights the complexities of the South Korean judicial system's handling of such events. The legal ramifications extended beyond the arsonist himself. The drivers of both trains, 1079 and 1080, faced charges and received prison sentences. The driver of train 1079 was convicted for failing to immediately report the fire, a failure that arguably allowed the second train to become involved. The sentence of the driver of train 1080, who bore the brunt of the blame for the deaths on his train, exemplifies the intense scrutiny given to the response to the crisis. It was clear that the legal system was attempting to hold everyone accountable for the various failures that compounded the tragedy. However, the lack of clarity in command and communication systems highlighted deeper issues within the Digu Metro's overall operational protocols. What levels of responsibility were in place? Did the system provide adequate support for those caught in such extreme circumstances? These questions are vital to understand how similar tragedies can be prevented. The ramifications of the incident were far-reaching. It was not merely a matter of apportioning guilt, it exposed systemic failings within the emergency response system and even within the broader social fabric that had allowed Kim Dehan to fall through the cracks. The legacy of the Digu subway fire is a poignant blend of tragedy and reform. The 192 lives lost serve as a constant reminder of the devastating consequences of negligence, inadequate safety measures, and the devastating impact of mental illness left unaddressed. But the disaster also spurred significant changes. The incident exposed critical flaws in the subway system's safety protocols, exposing the lack of training among drivers in handling serious fires and the flawed belief in the train's fireproof nature. The subsequent government white paper, published in 2005, resulted in significant improvements across the nation's subway systems. Flammable materials were removed from trains, emergency procedures were overhauled, and the introduction of breathing apparatus in large public facilities was mandated. The creation of the Digu Safety Theme Park exemplifies the long-term commitment to preventing future disasters. This innovative approach, focusing on educating the public and providing practical training, stands as a testament to the lessons learned from the harrowing event. The efforts to improve safety weren't merely reactive, they were a proactive step toward ensuring such a tragedy never repeats itself. The success of these safety measures is evident in the 2014 incident in Seoul, where an attempted arson resulted in minimal damage and no casualties, proving that the changes implemented were effective. This positive outcome is a small victory amidst a heavy loss, showcasing the long shadow that Digu casts, serving as a cautionary tale while also underscoring the potential for constructive change in the wake of unimaginable devastation. The current status of the Digu Metro reflects the profound impact of the 2003 fire. Line 1, after a period of closure for improvements and upgrades, reopened with significantly enhanced safety features. The station itself remains a site of remembrance, a stark reminder of the loss of life. The ongoing safety improvements and ongoing efforts to educate the public highlight the commitment to preventing future disasters. 
However, the legacy extends beyond the physical changes to the subway system. It's a legacy that compels ongoing discussion about mental health support, emergency preparedness, and the importance of comprehensive safety regulations. The improved safety measures are a testament to the nation's resolve to prevent such a devastating event from ever happening again, showcasing a journey of healing and improvement amidst a lingering sorrow. One cannot help but wonder if the improvements in the transportation infrastructure and the ongoing emphasis on emergency procedures are enough. The memory of the fire serves as a constant reminder of the human cost of negligence and the importance of constant vigilance. The story of the Digu subway fire remains a critical lesson in urban planning, emergency response, and the enduring need for societal awareness of mental health issues. It's a story that continues to unfold, a narrative woven with threads of tragedy, loss, and the determination to never forget.